I check out this electrical cart Reaper tone, man. Remember the Yamaha one, 210 kilowatt, man. 1.1 million views. Mm. Check out this go kart, man. Electric. Ah, look how wide this monster is, man. So we're gonna have a quick demonstration here. There's a person here. We can't identify this guy here in the camera. <laughs> okay, top secret, man. Show us what you got. How many kilos here? 115. 115 kilos. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> shit! Holy shit! <laughs> it's cornery. <laughs> How many kilowatts is the most? Maybe 18. 18? <laughs> yeah! Check out this electrical Man, so much power here, yeah, man! Ooh, two batteries split with an axle, two motors, man, one motor in each wheel. <laughs> this massive motors here, Danny Riverton, man! I do all oh, my maths! <laughs> 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 Show your face, you'll get the light! <laughs> so, yeah, so he's actually redesigning the motors here, he split the motors. <laughs> so, it's gonna have one motor here. Oh, you hold it, you hold it, you show. It's the there. So one motor there and a chain drive here Double and a, here. another motor there. For, so you've got one battery, one controller, one motor and then another half of the, and they have the same system. So everything times two, you like power and more power, man. <laughs> power. Yeah, twice the power, man. And hang on, we got to come back for this. Show us what you're doing, man. So your uh, latest creation. Go -kart. I've, um, I've redesigned the go-kart for the, for the benefit of the hidden race. <laughs> <laughs> Improving the go-kart racing. Get rid of this for a second. Yeah, this is the motor plating. Mm. We've gone for um, a differentiated rear end. It's not. Uh, it's the same original axle. It's just been cut in half here. You did this thing just yesterday. Yeah. We were talking on the phone here. Just machining this. Two bearings. There's one bearing there, one bearing there, and this housing. You did some other changes here. You had to add this bar here because yeah. there's nothing there. Move the bar out of here and put a different bar in here. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Like welding and doing things at night time. Poor neighbors, man. <laughs> ah, but you don't talk that loud like I do. <laughs> uh, we're not going to have any skidding and scrubbing going around corners. So when we go around a corner, we won't have to lift up the inside wheel. Yeah, because uh, just explain to some people. So what happened to a normal go-kart? So when you steer to the left or to the right, the whole frame twisted. A normal go-kart corner in three wheels. Lifts up like this. <laughs> and he's slightly off the ground. Oh, because... The yeah, the steering geometry and to, to fix a problem. <laughs> to fix a problem, like because they have a, like a petrol engine here. And right? a single engine, they have to have a single shaft. Single shaft. So yeah. it's all like a because of the petrol engine, right? Yeah. But when it comes to electric motors, you have like two well, motors. Yeah, you can have two motors separate. Look, completely separate. When I turn to the right, this wheel seems to drop down and this one lifts up. So what they what you get is this tripod effect. So the cart wants to do that. Mm, so yeah. The front wheels actually stay on the ground, but the inside rear wheel lifts. Centrifugal force makes the cart go towards the outside wheel and it lifts up the inside wheel, which eliminates the scrubbing. Mm. Yeah, it'll actually it stops the cart going straight ahead in the corner because if you leave these two wheels on the ground, it's going to force the cart to go straight ahead. Straight. It's the one thing that allows the cart to actually go around the corner. So basically what you've got is a three-wheel go-kart, which is bullshit. So <laughs> my concept is... The only reason we have a, uh, a solid rear axle is because we've only got one motor. But when we go to an electric motor, we can have two motors and then we can split the shaft and then we can get rid of the whole jacking bullshit and we can leave the inside wheel on the ground. We can leave the cart... Four wheels down! So we've got a four-wheel go-kart. So essentially, we've got, uh, we've got more traction in the arse end and it's going to technically my theory at the moment. It's going to allow us to go around corners faster. So. Much faster. We've got one more wheel down. It's not a trike anymore. It's also going to drastically reduce the amount of physical effort it takes to steer the cart because... You're not lifting the truck. You're not lifting you're not anymore. Actually, you're not just turning the front wheels. You're actually causing the whole cart to, to tripod. <laughs> it's a thing. It is, yeah. No tyres. Scrubbing. Some interesting 
So he's actually modifying, see this thing here? It's actually an angle. So he's actually gonna put this thing back to normal. So what's the setup here? Let's just get the motor, just just some, like kind of show like what he's doing there. So uh, yeah, the other one. This thing, this is a motor frame that I'm gonna make with that aluminium you saw over. Yeah, yeah, so he's just making wood just so he so doesn't waste metal. There, and that goes there. I'm not gonna show it here. Right, and then, the, the right, and then the it's got goes there. Yeah. yeah. Gonna make a few uh, little brackets and things to hold it. Over and it's gonna be there. chain drive between here and there. Yep. Chain drive there. Yeah. So what's the motor? Oh, yeah. This is the motor you're using here. Is oh, it yeah, the got, same one? Need motors, so. Yeah. So, like so this cheap. is. Uh, you're actually redesigning the whole motor, pretty much. Um, it's a zero nine. It's a Motenergy zero nine one three that's heavily modified to start with. It usually goes like this. This is a 0913. So it's this like, is the only original thing here, right? Yeah, it's called the stator. The stator there, there's a rotor in the middle, and then we've got another stator like that, and then we've got a motor frame like this. This is even water-cooled um, motor You frame. machined everything yeah. here. So this is all your creation, right? Yeah. So this is kind of what um, a 0913 modified looks like. It's a, it's a double stack, and um, works pretty well. What happens is the, the, the two stators on either side of the magnet are working and they're pushing both poles at the same time. Mm. It's an efficient use of a magnet, but the problem is the magnets overheat twice. They, they warm up twice as quick, and they refuse to cool down. There's nothing allowing them to cool down. The so, magnets don't like to yeah. be like too, too hot. They actually lose the yeah. strength. And when they get hot, they will temporarily lose power. Mm -hmm. And when they get cold again, they cool down, they have, will have slightly less power. Every time you heat them, they will slightly lose, lose power. But when they do get hot, they lose a lot of power. So what I'm doing here is I'm copying the MRAX um, architecture here by uh, in, in a half a way. We're getting <laughs> we're getting rid of. We're only allowing the magnets to be forced by, from one side. So I'm splitting the standard motor energy motor. I'm simply splitting it in two. You have another one here, so you can show. So yeah. there's, there's another big one here. That's a standard motor down there. Just this one here. So there's a stator there. There's a rotor in the middle. Another stator over here. That's a standard motor. Yeah. So I've so got just... to modify that one too. So what I'm doing is I'm getting the two stators and separating them, and I have to get a rotor for one of the stator, for one of the stators, and then I have to make another rotor for the other stator. So I'm splitting the motor in two. How does the magnet go here inside here? So I see there's some like leaps on the side here to hold the magnet, right? This rotor is in two halves. It gets screwed together, mm. and it clamps the magnet inside it. This is one of the magnets I'll be using in the cart. <laughs> 16 mil thick. It's a neodymium. Wow. And it goes in there. So it goes in there. It's very dangerous. Very dangerous. <laughs> so yeah, he's been holding this thing like, don't, don't let it drop, don't let it go anywhere. <laughs> hey, yeah, it keeps outside. So did you, you actually machine this uh, new demon, right? Yeah, I had, I had them custom made in China. They sent me, they sent them over to me and they were the wrong shape, so I had to modify them. Oh, how hard is the machine this? It just got... Yeah, it's pretty tricky stuff. Yeah, nasty. it just goes everywhere, right? Nasty stuff. And sticks everywhere. Oh, he's detecting some metal here. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere <laughs> you you could actually have two big heavy motors one on each side like one yeah, here one that it's too heavy like in go-karting and like it, it yeah in, right? you don't have too much horsepower yeah i don't make burnout machines yeah that's chris jones's job by the way. <laughs> i make cars that go fast around corners everything i own goes fast around corners that's where i specialize in so <laughs> when i have two motors i can power each wheel individually mm. So what I'll need then is because they're um, three-phase motors, they're magnet motors, I have to have two controllers which look like this. Big Kelly. So there's a 200 amp Kelly, it's actually quite a small one. Mm -hmm. This is going to go in here somewhere. <laughs> oh. So I'll have one of these here. Maybe, I might stick them out here too, but whatever. Somewhere And I'll there. have another one over this side, so I have two of these instead of one. So I have a throttle pot down there. Mm. Let me just show you. So that, the signal that comes out of that throttle pot can be split into two and used to control both Kellys at the same time. So both Kellys will be running, will be um, listening to the same signal coming from a single pot. The one thing we're talking here uh, off camera, just before we started making the video, I was like, hey, but like, for the same throttle, you, you're not going to have this control, like we're going left. One controller spins faster than the other, you know, like to compensate. Because that's why all these uh, powerful electric car, high tech ones, that's what they're doing. They're doing like a, a separate yeah, controls. That's, that's for traction control and also directional control. They can spin one wheel faster than the other. Correct. To, to stop a slide. But, you know, I don't need to do that. Go kart drivers, they stop their own slides, they create their own slides. 
and um, perpetuate their own slides because fast corner has a little bit of slip angle as they go down. So um, we don't need to vector control because that's done completely automatically by the ground, basically. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to explain, but the car will go around corners perfectly. So, and then that's exactly what you, the experience you had when you used this uh, big yeah. hub motors here, right? Yeah. So you actually had this in an electric car, you go around the corners, what's your real life experience? experience? Is you don't need to vector control a left and a right hand individual drive, so they will do it completely automatically. You actually had a car, you made an electric car back on 2011 or something? Yep. That was a Daihatsu Mirror that had two hub motors, inboard hub motors. You actually have the hub motor yeah, there. over there, but... Yeah, I'll show yeah, this kind of side. Old. Oh, yeah, well, back in the day was the latest thing, eh? So, ah, so this so big bit like, here. This is one of the hub motors on this side, and there's another one over this side. It's like a tube of motors, two big, big ones. Uh, they might not be able to see what happened. So like two, imagine this times two. Yeah, so these were spinning independently of each other, both connected to a drive shaft and then each to each front wheel completely independently. Had the same 200 amp controllers that I'm putting into the gun car. And what was your experience there? Well, I deliberately tried to make the car misbehave. I thought that it would misbehave and I tried to prove that it wouldn't. So I was going around a long sweeping corner at 50 kilometers an hour holding the steering wheel at a certain angle and jumping on and off the throttle, like going full throttle, off the throttle, full throttle. And there was no feedback coming through the steering wheel and the car tracked perfectly around the corner. So what that meant was that two individual drives weren't affecting the steering of the car. Mm. And the normal car, the car just got a boom, 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 boom. Well, the normal car's driven by a rear wheel with a differential, so it's got one power source, but an electric vehicle like this has two different power sources. That's the beauty, man. Yeah. But they, they work in unison and they work well together. <laughs> Yeah, especially when they're both controlled by a single throttle pot, it's the same signal <laughs> going both going to both controllers. So. Through the battery. This is a 175 volt battery. It's the same voltage as the R1 race bike, mm. but this is only 8.2 kilowatt hours. Oh, sorry, it's actually four kilowatt hours. So it's two packs that are in series. So it goes positive, negative, positive, and then negative, positives to create yeah, 84 volts each mm -hmm. compared to 168 volts. <laughs> Uh, in total battery voltage. Then, when we get the power supply, we can, we parallel those uh, that power to both controllers. Mm. So both controllers have 168 volts. Mm, what cells you use here, man? Are they LiPo cells? LiPo cells. Ooh, what what brand? What manufacturer is this? Uh, these are Enerland. Yeah. But now I'm using YGS. YGS. So yeah. they they fun like they're just like the your Yamaha one, right? So they got like uh, tabs, like a positive yeah. and negative on yeah, the double, ends. Double ended cell, four amp hour. So that's the negative and that's the positive. Most of the Hobby King cells, they're all like a positive, negative, yeah. very little Single. tabs. So this one you can actually suck up the heat inside the cell pretty well, right? Cells like to, could they, you can get a lot of heat out of the cell from the tabs. Mm. So we make our bus bars with uh, cooling grooves in them and we air cool the bus bars. So the bus, bus bar is, is actually like a heat sink sucking yeah. everything from the cell. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's just, just like your Yamaha. Right? Awesome, man. Mm. Yeah. So basically, just distributing the weight to the very ends of the go kart, right? Yeah. So like you don't so want to. We don't. We're not. We're no longer trying to lift the inside wheel. We actually want to keep it down on the ground. Mm -hmm. All the weight that I am putting onto the cart is going to be out as wide as possible. So we've got 20 kilos here, 20 kilos here, and out very wide. And, the and low, and low as well. Yeah. yeah. Also, the motors that I'm putting out are also way out here to the sides. That's going to help keep the weight down. It's going to help keep the cart settled on the road. So what's this uh, little battery here that you have here? This is a power source that powers up the controller and probably run a horn off it. And you also run cooling systems off it. What about this thing here? So this is your magic, uh, right? Brakes. I've put these, these are basically front brakes off a quad bike. A normal go-kart doesn't have the front brakes, right? Yeah, pretty much. A shifting cart does. The bigger version, yeah. like a shifting cart, like the one that, yeah, high performance shifting gear, big version of a go-kart. And I've looped them down into here. These are two, that goes to the calipers. And this is a pressure transducer which controls the regen on the rear axle. So we've got an, an integrated hybrid system which is a front disc brake and a rear regen brake integrated into one pedal. Wow! So the rear wheel, you're not having disc brakes then, you're just using no, the regen. No, you don't need disc brakes on the rear axle. Just no, regen. regen, no disc brakes. Woo! <laughs> very, very, very effective. So you convert the mechanical to hydraulic, yep. to electronic, and then the controller activates a regen and holds the wheels like a normal brake. 
<laughs> I call them brick wall breaks. So incredible. <laughs> and this is for safety, right? So like, is that for regulation? You have to have some. If so something catches on fire, I'm just going to hit that with my Bang. Hand. Yeah. yeah, like a big punch there. It's manual, like manual on off switch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, so let's, thanks so much, man. Oh. I'm going to show, I'm going to show. Yeah, first time, and look how easy it is. this thing is to turn it on. Yes. Oh. They go real fast down the hill. It goes fast there? Eh? It goes slalom like I did. Don't use the brakes. <laughs> Go, mate. Yeah. <laughs>